all the time. Now, if you folks, all of us here, will be hired to cheer Clemson, USC, I think we will fail miserable. <laughs> There's somebody that we need to cheer far more than any team. Hey. Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> yes, God is good. The Lord is good. He's merciful. Estamos viniendo a ustedes desde la ciudad de Irmo en Carolina del Sur y estamos uh, contentos de que es un nuevo año. El Señor nos ha dado la bendición de la vida para poder vivir y ver las luces de un nuevo año. Así que mientras caminamos en este 2024, esperamos que el Señor sea con usted y que usted le dé una oportunidad de abrir su corazón y entregarse, rendirse a los pies de Jesús. I'm saying that um, it is a blessing to see the light Amen. of a new year, 2024. Amen. And I was challenging and inviting, just like I will do it right now, to give Jesus a chance to surrender fully Amen. to him. Today's sermon, I have entitled it to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Since I was a child, when I first heard a message with this title, I said, I wish I could preach that sometime. I was about probably eight years old or so. And today's the first time. Yeah. And when you go and you go through different uh, channels, YouTube, or you, what, what have you, there's so many titles on this. So, you know, when you take a verse in the Bible, you can create probably 100, 200, 1,000 sermons. Amen. The Word of God is so rich Amen. that will, if we study it, will take us safely to the celestial kingdom. Amen. Are you making plans of being there? Oh, yeah. Huh? Are you, are you sure? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you will not be so happy with things that we have to discuss in the next few minutes. I have uh, taken some uh, input from a fellow in Hawaii. I don't think he's part of our denomination, but I can see how the Lord is working in his brain and what he has put. I will share something about that later. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We know, and the world just finished celebrating the birth of Jesus, even though it wasn't December. But we, as Seventh day Adventist Christians, we unite with the sentiment of the world uh, that Jesus did come, yeah. that he was born. Just like the Old Testament prophets predicted under the unction, under the, the directives of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we know that he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Amen. And then there is a period of a little bit of silence. And then we know that three wise men from the east Amen. came bearing gifts to the child. Around this time, Jesus could have been around two years of age, more or less around that, that uh, uh, periphery of years. And they came with laud, with praises, with reverence, with homage to the king of kings, a little babe. And then the next time we hear about Jesus is at the temple. How old was he? Let's see. The Bible says what? Twelve. Yeah. We will, we will not split hairs with 12 or 13. He was just almost a teenager. And we find him discussing, studying the Bible. The Bible is not to be fought over. 
or get into quarrels or arguments is to be studied. And that is exactly what Jesus was doing there with these scholars. And how were they? They were amazed at how this little fella that we we have not we have never seen we he has not been in our in our school classes or whatever. How does he know all these things? And then from there on, there is what is called the silent years of Jesus. From 12 until he was 30 years of age, 18 years. The silent years of Jesus, or was he silent? Or do we know what was taking place in those 18 years? Do we? Well, let me tell you, I do. I do. What does the Bible say? That during those years, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That's all I need to know. That suffices to me. If you want to go beyond that, then be careful. Be careful with the gossip. Be careful with being a busybody. We don't need to know anything else. But we know that he grew up in favor with God and with man. Amen. Then, the next time, we see him as coming down the road to be baptized by his cousin. Right? And what happened there? When he rose up from the water, I'm saying this because maybe some of you have not read this before. The voice of the Father was heard. God the Father. God the Son was coming up from the water. And then the Holy Spirit. The triune God. The Trinity right there. And the Father saying, This is my beloved Son. In whom I am well pleased. Este es mi hijo amado en el cual yo tengo contentamiento. Beautiful. And then he goes to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Nazareth was an ill repute town. Because Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of that place? Can you imagine? Back then. Imagine 4,000 years down the road with us. And yes, something good, the best that this world has ever known, came out of Nazareth. Somebody should say praise the Lord on that one. Hallelujah. Now we see him in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through the 21st little story right there that Jesus went up on the Sabbath day Amen. that is the Seventh-day Adventist yeah. he was a Seventh-day Adventist he went to worship on the Sabbath day as it was his custom look how the detail in the Word of God yeah. as it was his custom we will start preaching now is that your custom is that my custom? Now don't get quiet now. Because this is, this is, brothers and sisters, I vowed back in November that as God gives me life to be here with you, to mingle, to, to, to grow together, I cannot, I cannot be passive in my walk with the Lord. I cannot. The Lord has given me victory for some things that I, I have been struggling with. Amen. And respectfully, it's none of your business. Amen. Not even my wife's business. She doesn't know because that is between the Lord and I. Amen. She's got, and you all got what you need to deal with. Amen. And the Lord has given me victory. And it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. But I have the helper. Next to me. Amen. He's given me the, the strength to grow 
more and more closer to Jesus. So now Jesus is here and he is handed the Bible. And it is the what? The book of Isaiah, right? Now, let me go a little bit further. This was his maiden sermon. You know, maiden speech, right? Especially when congressmen go over there, the first speech, oh, it's a maiden speech. This was Jesus' maiden sermon. And in this occasion, he used this passage of scripture as his first text to kick off his ministry. Right in that very, very place. Now, 700 years before, Isaiah had been used by the Holy Spirit to write this prophetic utterance found in Isaiah 61. And there it detailed what the mission and the ministry of the Messiah would be. 700 years. This is what sets apart God as an author Amen. Amen. from the rest of the authors of the world. This is what sets apart God's word from any piece of literature. Amen. Prophecy. Prophecy. Elder Henry Wright in that great sermon that he preached at Oakwood some time ago, I got proof. He says that if God tells you that in 500 years it's going to be raining, well, on that day you get up and get your umbrella because God declared it so. Amen. Now, Jesus stood and this is what he said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to what? Preach. To preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, Amen. to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. When Jesus came from his inner circle, he was asked, Show us the Father. Remember who that was? Philip. Philip, yes. Show us the Father. And Jesus must have taken a, a big blow because he said, Philip, folks, I've been with you all this time. And you tell me now to show you the Father? Who has seen me? What? Seen has Father. seen the Father. So among other reasons of God's uh, incarnation, Jesus' incarnation, he came to show you and to show me what God is like. Amen. He did it through his teachings. He did it through the interaction that he had with the common people. From high places like Nicodemus. Amen. Huh? To all the way to the leper. Amen. In that selfless life that he carried. Being the king of kings. Being the creator. He came down to the lowest. That is what Paul wrote. To the Philippian church. In chapter 2. And then. The demonstration. Of that love. That we cannot understand. The sacrifice, the torture, the death, and the mighty resurrection. In this prophecy written by Isaiah is the ministry and mission of Jesus. Now, let me ask you, how many Christians do we have in this place right now? How many Christians? Cuatro cristianos sabemos aquí en este recinto. Amen. God has a ministry in the church and a mission in the world for you to fulfill. Amen. Now listen to that. 
I am not playing games, brothers and sisters. Because when I said yes to the call of the conference, James chapter 3, verse 1. If anyone wants to become what? A teacher or a leader, you will be judged even more severe. So, I know what I have to deal with. That's why, brothers and sisters, I look at that day when we all here, and many others that are not here for whatever reason, gather up and around the tree of life Amen. and discussing what travails. And in the end, we are told by the inspiration that nothing will compare the beauty that God has prepared for each one that love him. Amen. That love him. Amen. That love him. Amen. Verse 2. I'm going back to Isaiah chapter 61 now. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus stopped there. Right there. And he sat down. And Luke says that um, all the eyes were centered on him. And then he started to talk to them. And they marveled. But then there was a, a part of speech that didn't set well with them. In the church. Mm -hmm. On the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And guess what? What did they do? They got up. They seized him. And they took him out of the church. And out of the city, because it says that the city was set on a hill, and they were going to murder him right there. But was the time right for him to die for you and for me? No, it wasn't. And he, he just got away from them. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise. Hallelujah. And now I see why we are sometimes, even though as a congregation, I would say we, fare, we do fair in praising God. I wish there were more. Because some of us don't bring our garment of praise. Hallelujah. That they may be called trees of righteousness. Yes. The planting of the Lord. That he may be Lord. glorified. Amen. I'm almost half of the sermon. Over half. Yeah. Now I'm going to do this from the great to the least. Who is the great? Who is the great among us? Jesus. Jesus. If you think you are, well, I tell you what, there's a few uh, psychiatrists here that can help you with that. That he may be glorified. Let's start with that. The last part. Psalm 29 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Why is it mortal sinners, puny us, that have trouble coming to the church, and say something on behalf of who created you and who redeemed you. Amen. Huh? Have you thought about that? Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable doing it right here, well, everybody is about the same. Amen. Do you think you're going to do it at the supermarket? Huh? Do you think you're going to do it at work? You see, brothers and sisters, the road to salvation is... Or demonstrates how close I am connected with Jesus. Yeah. And remember, if I am shy, if I uh, I don't I I, I it's just, oh I'm not into talking to people. Well, hello. Just wait until we say the final amen here, and you will see how many people talk. Uh -huh. And how can we not talk when? Brother David's favorite time. Praises. Yeah. Why can't we? It goes beyond and saying, yeah, I love Jesus. 
Oh, he's great. But, if, but when it comes to showing how much he means to me, I shy away. That he may be glorified. Glory. The purpose for you and for me to be in, on planet earth was not because mom and dad got me. There's a purpose be, be, behind that. It's not to make the most money that you can. Well, God gives us abilities, so that's good. But if that's the sole reason for you that you think that you're alive, you're sadly mistaken. We came here to planet Earth to glorify Him, to be His hands, to be His feet, Amen. to be His mouth, Amen. to be His eyes, to be His ears. That is what salvation is all about. Yeah. How much I am wasting myself in proclaiming Him as the absolute King of Kings. Amen. Let me share, share you this for a minute. A desire to glorify God should be to us the most powerful of all motives. Hallelujah. Amen. This was written in 1899. In every place, let those around you see that you give God the glory. Amen. Let men be put in the shade. Let God appear as the only hope of the human race. Amen. Try this, brothers and sisters. It's not too late. You know why you're still alive? Because you need to hear this. Amen. Try it. And you will see how people will just melt to the subduing spirit of Jesus in you. Now, if you don't know Jesus, you won't be able to do that. Knowing about Jesus is not knowing Jesus. Right? The most disgusting words that will ever fall on human ear is, depart from me, I never knew you. I don't want that to happen to me or to you. There's no reason why. There's no reason why. The planting of the Lord. Psalm 92, 12, 13, and 14 says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Amen. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. Wow. You want to flourish? Do you want to flourish? Amen. You need to come to church. You need to take the advantage that God is giving you and I to come because the time will come that you and I will not be able to and there there will be the wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. I should have. I should have. Mm. Verse 14, they shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Isn't that something beautiful? Yeah. Now let me share with you this is uh, Dr. Nick Van Rensburg out there in the island of Hawaii. And he says, being planted in the house of the Lord is a youth serum. You want to be youth again? Mm -hmm. Come to the plant. Yes. Come to the plantation of the Lord, Hallelujah. which is called the church, the meeting place. Many believers today refuse to plant themselves in the house of the Lord. They float around from one meeting to another and from one church to another, but never plant themselves. Right. Folks, I believe this was inspired by the Lord to this man here. Most floaters do not want to deal with the re relational issues that come with being planted. They also do not want the accountability or the responsibility of being in a team. That's it. I've been part of church leadership since the age of 13 in British Honduras. I was secretary of lay activities. That has disappeared. So this is just information to our uh, new members. So the secretary of lay activities was part 
of the church board, 13 years of age. From that time on until today, in every congregation that I have been part of, when nominating committee comes, then brothers and sisters alike show their true colors for Jesus. Making all kinds of excuses. I can't talk, but like I said, you wait. When the final amendment is, done, is said and done, Refusing accountability and responsibility, not being willing to do. Oh, but you are a Seventh-day Adventist, all right. Well, go home and talk to the Lord yes. and say, Lord, I know that I have not been doing right. In our denomination, we have a system of order, systematic order. Whenever you move from one place, you're required to bring that membership, whatever you are being fed Amen. and supported. And have camaraderies with the folks. The devil has one in a thousand ways to lure you outside the road. And we don't know it. But we're in church. Let me tell you this, church attendance will not save you. Keeping the Sabbath will not save you. It will condemn you. Believers who are not planted are like potted trees. Potted tree believers do not flourish to their full potential in the courts of their God. And as they get older, they can become stale, ineffective, and without much fruit. What does the Bible say if you don't bear fruit? What will happen to you? What happened to the fig tree? What happened to the fig tree? Huh? If I don't bear fruit for the, for the Lord, do you think that I would have a chance to walk the streets of gold? Jesus said, if you're not with me, you what? There's no spiritual Switzerland there. The one who does not, what? Gather. Gather. We are living, this is the beauty of this, uh, of the, uh, I, would just, I, I just had some excerpts here. We are living in the last days and it is time for us, Pastor Nick Van says, to be connected like never before. Amen. Like what? Like never before. There's a very important job ahead of all of us. And we cannot do it alone. Time to get planted. I love that. Sila. The word of the Psalms. Are you willing to be planted this year? Truly rooted in the Lord? Yes. Doing what is right? Yes. To make this congregation here flourish? Yes. Not because of you and I here, because of yeah. this belongs to Jesus. And we have an enormous responsibility, brothers and sisters. All of us here, we're accountable and we're responsible to the calling. Lastly, the year, the acceptable year of the Lord. To be planted as trees of righteousness. We started with giving glory to God. Bring him Lord and honor. And then being planted like Psalm chapter 1 says. Planted by what? By the waterside where you can get your nutrients. And now, the goal of becoming trees of righteousness is to reveal the glory and plans of God in my life. To be rooted in Jesus with deep and strong foundation to withstand these evil times. Let me pause there. A few years ago, <laughs> wow, eight years ago, 
we were planning to bring mom, my wife's, my mother-in-law, to come and live with us. And she made it to South Carolina. But unfortunately, unbeknown to us, 20, 54 hours after he she touched South Carolina ground, she was called to her rest. That's it. But we had made plans to, we have a back porch covered, you know, part of the structure. And we thought, if we can just make this a room for her. So we got in touch of a savvy guy. He knows his stuff. And he came and he said, ah, oh, you guys were cheated here. Because the back porch, the slab, that should have been one foot, it was only four inches. How do you know when you buy a house? It's a brand new house. So what is the solution? There's a company, so-and-so, give us a name. It's going to cost around so-and-so. Not cheap. But what they would do, and they would come and put a one-foot foundation underneath. And then you see here, they're gonna come with some machinery there and will jack it up because now the house was like tipping. And sure enough, that's how they did it. Very, very professional. And they raised that, that house and all that. Now we can have something there, but mom passed. And um, so we have not done much there, but that foundation, can you imagine if we, and had the opportunity of doing that, maybe that part of the house would have already been torn. Deep and strong foundations to withstand these evil times and the ones that will soon unfold on the entire planet Earth. Time is ebbing away, brothers and sisters. The angels in Revelation are holding back the winds of strife. Amen. And don't, don't go to sleep on your like sonambulism. Don't go sleepwalking, thinking that you will not get hurt or you will not be affected. Each individual will be tried as he or she will be the only individual on planet Earth. We will be tested. And now is the time to get rooted and planted in Jesus. Amen. That is a tree of righteousness. Amen. Here's what we have been teaching about. Isaiah 61, 1, 2, and 3. But the planting of the Lord is to get trees of righteousness. And then Jesus' Jesus's mission and ministry will be the fruits, like in, in that tree. Then we can preach with power to the poor. Yeah. We can heal the brokenhearted. Yeah. Proclaim liberty. Yeah. Not only physical, but all of us. The devil has shackled us up. But King Jesus is right there Amen. to liberate us, to free us, to proclaim, to open the prisons, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Before that great and dreadful day comes, each one of us. For some, that day physically will not come because they are already sleeping. Mm -hmm. But the time of provision has already passed for them. But you and I, you and I, that are still here, Amen. there's a purpose to get it right. Yeah. And if God allowed us to see six days of 2024 is for a reason. Yeah. Because like I said before, not too long ago, mm -hmm. the devil is trying to annihilate us at every bend of the way. And it is real. 
He is a defeated foe. But he's still alive. He's still doing damage. And he wants, he has made damage on our families, our children, our church. There's no reason to take a vacation every so often from church. There's no reason for that. You take yourself, take a brand, fire brand from the fire, what happens? Goes out. Yep, that's right. That's right. So, I invite you, brothers and sisters, to promise the Lord. Promise the Lord that we will change. But it's not just mouth, but with actions. Amen. With actions. You know, I have said, you want to see this little congregation here might, mightily singing, you come to prayer meeting. I don't know what, what, what's the deal, but they we sing our hearts out, don't we? Amen. So stop sing at home. Come to Jesus. You are his by creation Amen. and by redemption. redemption. He paid the ultimate price. Mel Gibson's uh, passion yes. doesn't do a bit of justice of what Jesus went through for you and for me. Right. We cannot afford that. We cannot afford to lose our salvation. So, as an appeal, I would like us to tell Jesus right now, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. Is he your master? Amen. Is he your friend? Amen. Is he your savior? Amen. See, a lot of people want the saving grace of Jesus, but they don't want their lordship. And that's where, that's where things get rough. Get rough. So, I will invite you to stand up. And thank you for the response that you're giving to Jesus today. Thank you. Three stances. Lord Jesus, I have promised to serve. Father, you have heard 
the message that he laid on my heart. You know how much I have wrestled through these past weeks. And you have seen the stance of your people here. And we have sung that we are promising you, Lord, to walk closer. But not in our strength. We know that. But you have given us the paraclete, the helper, the Holy Spirit, that will help us, not tomorrow, but today, to start walking a closer life to your son Jesus. There's no excuse for any, any one of us to miss heaven unless we don't love you. I don't think that's the case. But help us, Lord, to realize that eternity is just a millimeter away. Therefore, I ask for protection over these children of yours. That the evil one will not get close to us. And we will be expanding the ministry and mission of Jesus. Lord, we want to be hidden in the cup of your hand. So, Lord, you can read each part here. And I hope that each one of us will give the Holy Spirit a chance to, be, to bring forth the fruition that you have envisioned before the foundation of this world. Thank you. God, Father, for Jesus Christ. And now as we depart to taste food, bless the hands. Bless again this congregation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks. Thank you, thank you.